Hello and welcome to Otten Math. In this edition of Otten Math, we're going to talk about trigonometry, the basics of trigonometry with right angles. So if I have a right triangle, <clears throat> I have two legs and a hypotenuse. When we speak of the components of trigonometry, uh, we're always talking about sides and hypotenuse in relation to a reference angle. In this case, we're going to call the angle in question of the reference angle theta, and we're going to mark it as this bottom right-hand corner angle. So if this is my reference angle, then the adjacent side is going to be the side that's right next to uh, the angle. And my opposite side is going to be the side that's opposite the angle in question, or theta. And then my hypotenuse is a hypotenuse. If I were to change the reference angle, <coughs> I just change the reference angle from that angle to this angle here, then my adjacent side and my opposite side are now reversed. So this becomes my opposite side and this becomes my adjacent side. So let's put that <coughs> angle in question back to where it was and let's talk about what the different trig functions mean. And all they are are just relationships between sides. So sine is going to be the relationship between the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Cosine is going to be the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. And tangent is going to be the opposite side to the adjacent side. And an acronym which is pretty common in talking about trigonometry, it's called SOHCAHTOA. And SOHCAHTOA tells you that sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is the opposite over the adjacent side. And really, these three trig functions are the ones you need to focus on because the other trig functions stem from or relate to these three. So cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. It's the hypotenuse over the opposite. So if you know sine, you just take the reciprocal of sine and you get cosecant. If you know cosine, you can get secant, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And if you know tangent, you can find the tangent or cotangent, which is just the adjacent over the opposite. Now, the way that I remember what goes with what is tangent and cotangent are pretty easy. Cotangent is just the reciprocal of tangent. It already has tangent in, it, in its name. So I know cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. With sine, I always remember that S is the first letter S and C are always together. I never have two S's together like sine and secant or cosine and cosecant. If I want to find the reciprocal, I take a look at the value of the letter or the letter itself. And I know that if it's an S, then the reciprocal will begin with C. I know that if the letter is a C, the reciprocal is an S. So it's always going to be, the reciprocal is always going to be the, let's say the opposite either S or C, but not the same first letter. So for sine, I have cosecant. For cosine, it starts with a C. I have secant, and those are my reciprocal relationships. So just to review, SOHCAHTOA, sine, S, is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Then I have cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. Uh, secant, which is the hypotenuse over adjacent, or the reciprocal of cosine and uh, cosecant, which is the hypotenuse over the opposite side. When we talk about trigonometry uh, we, and the basics of tri trigonometry, we also need to include the relationships of the sides of special right triangles. And the two in question that we'll talk about are 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees for one, and then 30, 60, 90 triangles for the other. In a 45, 45, 90 triangle, my legs will always be the reference side, and we'll say that those are the value of x. My hypotenuse is always going to be x root 2. So for example, if I have a side length in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, or a leg length of 3, I know my other leg length is going to be 3, and I know that my hypotenuse is going to be 3 root 2. In the case of a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I, I know there's a relationship there as well, and it's the side opposite the 30 degree angle is going to be x. The side opposite the 60 degree angle is x root 3. And the side opposite the hypotenuse 
I'm sorry, the opposite of the 90 degree angle is going to be two times the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle. So if I have a value of 4 for my side length opposite uh, the 30 degree angle, I know the side length for the side opposite the 60 degree angle is 4 root 3, and I know that my side length for the hypotenuse is 8. Now it's always important in figuring out these triangles, both 45, 45, 90, and 30, 60, 90, we're going to start with the reference side. In this case, it's the side opposite the 30 degree angle, and in this case, it's the side opposite the 45 degree angle. Last thing we're going to talk about are angles of elevation and angles of depression. So angle of elevation is just the angle formed between a horizontal line and a line of sight from a base and that horizontal looking up to a point at the top. So for example, I could have a cliff. I'm looking at another person on top of the cliff. Or it could be the top of a flagpole. Or it could be a tree. Either way, the angle of elevation is the angle formed from the horizontal to the line of sight looking up to the top of some object or something. The angle of depression is the angle formed by a horizontal looking down to some object. And what we're measuring here is just the distance, the vertical distance, from the intersection of the angle or the horizontal line to the line of sight looking down at this particular point. So I could be looking down on a ship or another person. And my angle of depression is just an angle formed with a horizontal. So remember, very important, when we're talking about angles of elevation and depression, the angle of elevation and depression is the angle formed with the horizontal line. Okay, It's not the angle formed with the vertical line. So if you were to measure this angle as part of your trig function in determining the height of some object, you would be using the wrong angle. You need to use the angle that's formed with the horizontal and the line of sight looking up to the top. Okay, so what we use and why this is important with respect to trigonometry is that uh, we can use trigonometry to figure out distances and angle measures uh, based on having just a couple pieces of information. For example, if I know the distance, uh, let's say this is a tree and I'm trying to measure the height of the tree. Uh, if I know the distance between myself and the base of the tree, and I know the angle of elevation, I'm able to measure the angle of elevation, I can figure out how tall the tree is, right? Because I have an angle and I have an adjacent side, all I need to figure out is the opposite side. So I would use the tangent of this measure, this degree measure, which we'll call, let's just say, x, tangent of x degrees is equal to my opposite side, which let's just call y, over my adjacent side, which I already know, which let's say it's 30 feet. And I can write an equation 30 feet times the tangent of x degrees is now equal to the height y of that tree that's in question. So we use trig with angles of elevation, angles of depression to measure potentially angle measurements as well as distances or heights or a, <clears throat> a direct distance between, let's say, the person who's looking at the top of the tree and the top of the tree itself.